friend Roland if you'll come up because you don't want me to lead the song. Um, the, the quickest way to empty the house. So, um, thanks Roland. I'm not sure if we have any accompaniment this morning. Do we? Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine know the song, I just want you to sing along this morning. That's going to be my song later on. We, we don't have any accompaniment, uh, accompaniment for Blessed Assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. Once again, good morning. Um, it's an honor um, to be
be here and participate in the resting and the laying away of Sister Martha Thomas. Uh, just thinking about her, thinking about the fact that she's always she always kept herself so neatly looking so impeccable. Right. I've always remember that about Sister Thomas. No hair was out of place, and quite a head of hair she had. You know, at this time we're gonna have our. A loving father, once again, it's, it's an awesome thing to be here, Lord, to honor Sister Thomas and the family, to pay our respects, Lord, for such a beautiful woman and a beautiful life. Father, I count it a privilege and an awesome privilege, Lord, to just be a part of this time of comforting, acknowledgement. So, Father, we just pray, Lord, indeed, that your angels that excel in strength would indeed comfort the family, the friends. That, Lord, you may come near unto us, Lord, at those times when we feel the loneliest and, Father, lift us up. Lord, we pray, Lord, that this day would be one that we will never forget. We know we won't. As, Lord, we lay to rest, Lord, one of your own, Lord, your daughter, our friend, mother to some, grandmother to others, aunt, and so forth and so on. Sister Thomas was and is a beautiful lady. We thank you, Lord, for the time that we've spent with her. We ask your blessings to be upon us this day. In the name of Jesus, this is our prayer. Amen. Amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though in hopes a host should again encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this I will be confident. The one thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. This is Psalms 21, um, 1 through 4. Oh, the crowd. 
I will ever be true It's shame and reproach Lightly bear Then he'll call me someday To my home far away Where it's glory forever I'll share To the old rugged cross So despised by the world It's shame and reproach gladly bear Then he'll call me someday And exchange it someday for a This time we're going to invite the family for a family tribute to come up and share and reflect to us. Thank you for coming. I just wanted to say something that was left out of the bulletin. No reflection to my beautiful niece, Deborah, but it's my fault because I did not put it in. Mother's hairdresser, Janet, was not only her friend, but she was like a daughter to my mother. And my mother thought of her as a daughter. For over 35 years, she did my mother's hair. My mother's hair had grown till it was down her back to her waist. At one time, her hair was less than an inch in length because of the medicine that she was taking when she was in the nursing home. Janice moved to Atlanta, Georgia, but every time she came home to visit, she made time to go and do my mother's hair. I talked to my mother nearly every day when she was taken and moved to a different section in the hospital because of COVID-19. And all she talked about was these few things. She wanted to go home, take a bath. She wanted Janice, she would be waiting there to do her hair. She wanted to sit in her little room at the table and read her Bible yeah. and look out the window as she waited for the Lord. Yeah. On Thursday before she had the massive stroke, I talked to her after 40 minutes. And when we prayed, she just went on and on, praying for her children, praying for her grandchildren. I thought she had stopped and I started to pray and she went right back praying again. I thank you. We had, I have such fond memories of my mother and doing things with her. She loved the Lord and finally she forgave herself and stopped blaming herself for things that she did or did not do in life. And she accepted the grace of God and his 
forgiveness and his peace. So I thank you all for coming. Thank you, Deborah, for all that you have done and all you others. And one day I know when Jesus comes, she will be caught up in that first resurrection to go home. And I expect to be there and also my husband. Also, I want to just say my husband loved her like a mother and she loved him like a daughter. Never was a time that he ever said, you go too much to do. I need you home with me. He pushed me even times I felt that I should stay home with him. So I thank the Lord for the life that she did and how she cared for each and every one of her children and grandchildren. She was there. As much as you need of her, she gave it. As little as you need, she gave it. And she loved it. Thank you. just take a few more minutes to give the family as much time as they may need uh, to come up and say some things if they so choose. <clears throat> July 10th, 1981. a hot, sultry day, a lot like today. I had no reason to believe that this would be a different day. It seemed like an ordinary day as I left out to go to work. At that time, my wife was pregnant with what would be our last of four children. So we had three daughters, hoping and praying for a son, <laughs> but there was no guarantees, as you can imagine. And of course, we didn't do the, what do you call it, the song, the song mm -hmm. So we had no idea. So I left out to go to work that morning. Uh, we're working in Northern Virginia. But I had this feeling that, Lou, that, that this would be the day. You know, I had that feeling. But I guess when you get in that late in your, in your pregnancy, you always have that feeling. But anyway, um, I did get a call that I perhaps should come home. And uh, we were doing the midwife thing at that time. Our first daughter was born in the hospital. The last three were born through midwives. That's, that's a beautiful thing. So on my way home, I'm nervous, of course, it is hot. I don't believe I had air conditioning in the truck that I was driving in, and I'm making my way home. So I get there, and there was the midwife was there. Then I see another car that was there also. So I walk into the bedroom, and there is the midwife, my wife, of course. And um, there was Darlene, and then there was Sister Thomas. What I found out was earlier, um, as my wife went into labor, the midwife got there and she asked if she knew someone who would be able to assist her. And of course, uh, Thomas, as, as I read the old bit, it said that she was known as the baby lady. And so I believe the first thing that came to her mind, my wife that is, was Sister Thomas and Darlene brought her up. And uh, when I got there, there he was. I didn't know it was a he at the time, but it was Sister Thomas who said, Tyrone, she says, Pull the diaper back and see whether it's a girl or a boy. Of course, my heart is pounding. And up until that time, everybody had been saying, you want a girl or a boy? And of course, the politically correct thing to say is, I just want a healthy baby. But in the back of my mind, after three daughters, yeah, I wanted a boy. And so she told me to pull the diaper back, of course, there was, you know. Great evidence of a boy, if you know what I mean. And so my heart was overjoyed. But I remember her calm demeanor as she sat there. And she was always so cool, Sister Thomas, that is. And uh, so accommodating. What a beautiful lady. And I just want to say that God has blessed us and blessed the family in particular with a beautiful mother, aunt, grandmother, if they're great grands, whatever the case may be, she has blessed us 
with having Sister Thomas to be in your lives, obviously, but also in our lives. What a great lady she was. And so I'll always remember that. Always remember that. Thank you so much. At this time, there may be some others who may want to come up and share a reflection, a thought, fond memories of Sister Martha Thomas. We'll give you that chance right now. morning everyone I was coming up to tell another story about the baby story oh. and I'm gonna tell you the story about the baby story but then as I was getting up my husband Alvin said tell him about the blanket <laughs> yeah I'm gonna tell you about the blanket but let me talk about the baby story so yeah grandma was always known as the baby lady and there's two things I will always remember you know back in the day before all the security at hospitals when Deborah and I was just a little thing uh, my mom and Uncle Lou could take us to the hospital. And you go just walk in on the first floor, right, Deborah? And see Grandma in there with the babies. Because it was, you know, we didn't have to worry about security back then. I remember the time where we went and they had those security doors and we could no longer go back there. But I always remember that. And lastly, about a baby, I remember it was um, February 5th, 2004. I was having a time at Savista Hospital in labor, not doing too well. I was worried, I was scared, I was crying. And just, it was amazing how it happened when I think back. Uncle James came through the door with Grandma in the wheelchair. I was crying, I was showing off, wow. Pastor. I was showing off. Grandma said, Shut that noise up. <laughs> you remember that, Uncle James? She said, shut that noise up. And my doctor, Dr. Espinosa, was standing there, and Uncle James and Grandma told Aunt Dr. Espinosa who she was and her history. And Dr. Espinosa said, well, I think you could deliver this baby. And Grandma said, yes, I can. Oh. She did not. <laughs> Moving on to the blanket. So I have a blanket that Aunt Marie gave me, a quilt that Mama made, and I cherish that blanket. And when we got married, Alvin thought he could use my blanket. And everybody who knows me, that, you know, that doesn't, it wouldn't work out too well, right. So one day, he was, Alvin had to tell on me and told Grandma that I was being mean, that I wouldn't share the blanket. So Grandma had the audacity, you know how she was about her men folk, right? Yes, Lord. Right? Yes, Lord. Grandma had the audacity to tell me that I had to share the blanket with him, the quilt. Let's just say he doesn't know where that quilt is today, so thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
title be of Florida. May it be no pain to know that others are thinking of you with sympathy, love, thanks, and Yvonne. that you will be surrounded by his comfort, love, and filled with a peace that only he can give. The speaker sympathy with love, Seabrook pastor and staff, and church family. Follow along with me with the obituary. Martha Thomas, also fondly known as, it's spelled Dumplin', but I remember growing up, everybody just said Dumplin'. Uh, she celebrated October 5th, 1926 as her birthday. Census data and witnesses actually document that she was likely born in 1925. Um, Martha departed this life on July 5th, 2020. She was born to the late Mr. Willie and Mrs. Daisy Chu, who was believed to have had 16 children. Martha attended public school in Calvert County, Maryland. She grew up in Parker's Creek and later moved with her parents to their small farm on Wilson Road. After some time working at home on the farm, she worked in homes as a domestic in Washington, D.C. Later, Grandma worked at Calvert Memorial Hospital as a nursing assistant in the newborn nursery for 26 years. She was fondly called the baby lady, as it is estimated that she cared for 1,281 babies during her career. She had a special rocking chair made just for her to rock the babies peacefully. When Martha had to take leave due to surgery, her daughter Darlene stepped in to fill her shoes. One doctor quickly stated, no one can take Martha's place. All who knew her witnessed her special tender ways that she had with her babies. At home, Martha raised five children whom she loved with all her heart. She later married Clarence Thomas Jr. in 1956. She kept her family together and worked many long hours to provide for them. She never complained about all she had to do. She always had a kind word to share and never raised her voice. She taught her children to take pride in their belongings and their home. When her children were young, she would tell them she ate dinner at work to ensure that they had enough to eat. At times, she worked away from the home and left them in the care of her dear mother, Daisy, or Mama. Martha would always send money and beautiful clothes home for her children, and when times were tough, they still remember that each Christmas she would provide each one with a bag of fruit and candy. Each Easter, they would each receive an Easter basket with chocolate and peeps. And as adults, she was always there to provide guidance and support. She was excellent at quilting, canning fruit, and cooking delicious meals. She loved to host family dinners during the holidays. Um, we can see her now just cooking with her sister, Aunt Marie, with Daisy Marie, and her daughters. Even still, her sons were the twinkle of her eye. Her children will always remember her love of sweet potatoes, raisin dumplings, her checkerboard cake, and her coconut and chocolate cakes. Shopping for nice clothes, and especially her kind heart. She also loved her vegetable garden, and she collected owl or dormants. Martha loved the Lord. She first attended the Bible Way Church, 
Later, she was baptized into the Emmanuel Seventh-day Adventist Church on Dare's Beach Road before making, to the, um, making her way to the Prince Frederick Seventh-day Adventist Church, making her Prince Frederick Seventh-day Adventist Church her home. She served in community service at Emmanuel. Martha was the last of her siblings. She leaves to mourn her sons, James Gann, and Normal Jacks, her daughters Mary Jane Hogan and Darlene Brown, her six grandchildren, Derek Gant, Chris Brown, Valta, Carlos Gant Sr., Deborah Jacks Pearson John, Stephen Brown, and Amanda Stewart Alvin, 12 great grandchildren, <laughs> seven great grandchildren, and a host of nieces, nephews, cousins, and friends. Proceeded in death. Her, her daughter, Betty Ann Carter, and siblings, Andrew Bernard Chu, <coughs> excuse me, Chu, Guy Edward Chu, Willie Chu, known as Bubba, uh, sis, um, um, Flotsy, a um, sister, um, Joseph Chu, Betty Jane Nagel, Donald Chu, and of course, Aunt Marie. Daisy Marie Chu, and Uncle Clifton, Clifton Rochester Chu. Thank you. When we had the opportunity, we would go to the uh, nursing home and, and I had a chance to make a cassette for Sister Martha. I don't know if you guys know what a cassette is. This is 2020. <laughs> Sister Martha ran that cassette until the wheels came off of it. I don't know who has it, amen. But it was four or five of her favorite songs I used to do for her. And uh, we'd visit out in the, in the uh, fellowship hall and when she wasn't up to it, we I get an opportunity to go in and uh, share some time with her in her room. So praise God for the memories of that. Um, absolutely. There's a song entitled Midnight Cry that uh, I'm sure she enjoyed. Um, technology doesn't want me to do it this morning, but God wants me to do it. So I'm going to get through it. Um, Midnight Cry. Midnight 
I look around me I see prophecy fulfilling every day there are signs of the times they're appearing everywhere I can almost hear the Father as it says son go get my children At the midnight cry when Jesus stands out loud on a cloud to call his children, the dead in Christ shall rise, oh, they shall rise to meet him in the air, gonna meet him in the air. At the midnight cry Oh, at the midnight cry At the midnight cry We'll be going home We'll be going home share a few words with you this morning from the Word of God. It is the Word of God that brings us comfort and hope. There are many things that would tear our minds and our hearts away from the Word of God. There's lots of self-help books, there's lots of philosophical writings, but it's the Word of God that points us to the realities that we hold dear. I want to share just a couple stories with you from the Word of God this morning. Stories that you've already heard, you know them well. I will start the story and you'll get to the end of it before I do, but don't get there too fast today, okay? The storm clouds are gathering. The little boat is sailing across. It started out as a pleasant evening sail. It was, it was a nice night. Our Lord and Savior laid down in the back of the boat and fell asleep. Somewhere out in the middle of that sea of Galilee, the winds began to howl and the waves began to roar. And those guys in that boat, some of them, many of them, were fishermen. They knew how to handle it. They knew what to do. They knew how to row. They knew how to bail. They knew all the right tactics in order to get to the shore. They knew the process. They knew what to do. And yet, the harder they struggled, the more they worked, the, 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 the more they labored at doing that which they knew to do, the deeper it got, right? You know the story. Desire of Ages tells us that they got to the point where they were hopeless. They realized they couldn't do anymore. And, and so they, they began to look around, you know, and what do you do when you're, when you're hopeless? You, you begin to look outside yourself, right? You begin to look beyond yourself. You look 
somewhere else. And, and at that moment, a lightning flash flashed. And, and there the disciples fixed their eyes on Jesus yeah. in the back of the boat, asleep. Lord, we are perishing, they cry, right? Don't you care? Are you not concerned? Look at this. Look at the water. It's up to our waist in our boat. We can't bail it out fast enough. Lord, what are you doing back there in the back of the boat sleep? Jesus wakes up and hears their cry and takes in that scene for a brief moment. And he stands up. And he says those words, right? Peace, be still. And instantly, the wind ceased and the water went flat. No more waves, no more lightning, no more wind. It, it was calm immediately. And, and uh, you can read the story, uh, you know, it's in Mark chapter 4, but, but the, the disciples are now more terrified than what they were before, Scripture says. They were more terrified after the calm came than they were before because they were in presence of God. And Jesus asked them a question, where, where is your, what? Have you no fear? Faith. It's funny how storms come into our lives, and, and it's in those moments that we realize we have or we don't have faith, right? It's in those moments of turmoil and upheaval, in those moments when our hearts are broken, that we, we understand our faith. So today, I pause for a moment to ask you, do you have faith? And who is your faith in? It's not what is your faith in, right? It's not what, it's who. Uh, there, there's another story, it's in John 11. It, it's a story, I, I, I shared some of these thoughts a week ago at, at Maxie Morgan's funeral service, but, but I think they're pertinent again today. Lazarus, you know Lazarus? Mm -hmm. Martha and Mary sent word to Christ and said, Christ, come, the, the one that you love, the one that you love is sick, come, help. And, and Christ heard the message, the messenger came, he heard the message and, and he said, oh, okay, this is for God's glory and he, he delayed his coming, right? He delayed. days went by. Jesus said to his disciples, you know, Lazarus, he sleeps, but I'm going to go wake him up. The disciples got, oh, good, Lazarus is better, right? And then Christ said, no, no, sorry, guys, Lazarus has died. We're going to a funeral. Martha has died. Your mom, your grandma, your great grandma. Martha has died. And Jesus has delayed his coming. Jesus makes his way to the town of Bethany. And there, word gets to Martha, so Martha runs out and, and meets him, not there at the house, but meets him out somewhere on the outskirts of the village. And, and she says to him, if you'd been here, if you'd been here, this would not have happened, right? And, and I, I don't want to paraphrase, so let me, let me get to the right chapter. I want to read Christ's words, right? And... Jesus says in verse 23 of chapter 11, your brother will rise again. Mm -hmm. and, and Martha says, 
I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And then Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in what? Me. He who believes in me. Yeah. Not he who believes in the resurrection. Not he who believes in the Sabbath. Not he who believes in whatever, whatever philosophy you want to talk about. It's not about a philosophy. It's about a person, Jesus Christ. He who believes in me. Believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Do you believe in Jesus today? I heard testimony today about Martha's faith, about about her commitment to Jesus. And and I didn't I didn't have the option, not an option. I didn't have the opportunity to really know Martha, and so I'm looking for that day, right? <laughs> I'm looking to that day when she's going to be raised up, and I can get to know her, right? Because that promise in Scripture, as we have our faith in Jesus Christ, that there is this day coming, that those that we love will be raised up, and Words that, again, you know, 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Words that, that we share often in this setting, and, and rightly so. They were, they were penned, I think, just for those of us who are in this house today. Brethren, I would not, I would not, I can't say it right. I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. And, and we all know, right, fallen asleep here means those who have died. I do not want you to be ignorant concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others that have no hope. And i got to pause for a moment and talk about sorrow, just for a moment. We all sorrow. But we don't all sorrow the same way. Some of us hold it tight to our chest. And that's okay. And some of us, the tears will flow quietly and softly, and that's okay too. And in others, it might be more demonstrative, and it, there might be actually some sound that comes with those tears, and, and that is okay too. Because we all sorrow, we, we suffer a loss, it, it, it's part of our life that is no longer with us, and, and, and until Jesus comes, it's, it's, it's on hold. So sorrow, it's okay to sorrow. It's okay to hurt. Jesus at the tomb of Lazarus wept, right? Jesus wept. He understands the hurt. He understands the separation. In, in fact, I would that God understands the separation that you are going through right now more than we are going through right now. Because God has how many children? The world. Every time a child of his dies, there's a pause, a separation, until the resurrection. Brethren, I would not have you be ignorant concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others that have no hope. For here's the hope, for we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For by this, uh, by, I can't read today. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that you who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and we shall always be with the Lord we have this day coming when Martha and Maxine and you name the list right you have a list moms dads brothers sisters cousins nephews nieces sons daughters we all have our list but those that we love are going to be raised up again. There's a passage in Job that, that I love. Job, by scholarship, is the oldest book in the Bible. The first one written. 
And what I love about the book of Job is that this promise, this hope, this, this understanding is found in the book of Job. Job says, oh, that my words might be written. Oh, that they might be engraved on a rock with an iron pen and lead. Now, I'm going to pause for a moment and interpret that into something that, that we understand a little better. There's two ways of doing that. The first is a, a tombstone, right? We, we engrave tombstones because we want people to remember those that we love. The other way that, that I like to remember this or, or interpret this is um, some of us when we were young in high school, back in my day anyway, um, it was the thing when you were going to graduate to find the tallest structure around. Usually it was a water tower, right? Remember that? And you would do what? You'd climb the water tower in the middle of the night and you'd spray paint up class of because you wanted everybody to know, right? This is Job. This is what Job's saying. I want everybody to hear. I want everybody to understand these words. And his words are these, that though the worms will destroy my skin, that with my own eyes I shall see my Redeemer. Job had this hope. He had this hope that even though death is a part of the reality in which we live, that there is something more coming. A day when our Redeemer will burst through the clouds. And he will call with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall be raised. We have a hymn in the Adventist church And, and again, I'm not going to sing it for you. Roland can sing it. Probably Pastor Tyrone can sing it. You don't want me to sing it. But these are the words. Yes, sir. We have this hope that burns within our hearts. Hope in the coming of the Lord. We have this faith that Christ yes. alone imparts. Faith in the promise of his word. We believe the time is here when the nations far and near shall awake and shout and sing, Hallelujah, Christ is King. We have this hope that burns within our hearts. Hope in the coming of our Lord. Let's pray together. Father, you are so gracious. Your word says, whenever I'm afraid, I can trust in you. Your word says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Your word says, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Your word says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yea, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And finally, Lord, your word says, be of good courage. And he, that is Jesus, will strengthen your heart. All you who hope. you all for coming. I prayed for what song to do and the Holy Spirit told me this one. And I thought it was a little too much and then uh, I gave Deborah one name and then the Holy Spirit said no I wanted this and I see exactly why providentially he wants this. So. One sat alone Beside the highway begging, his eyes were blind, the light he couldn't see. 
He clutched his rags and shivered in the shadows. Then Jesus came and bade his darkness flee. When Jesus comes, the tempter's bars are broken. When Jesus comes, the tears are wiped away. He takes the gold and fills the heart with glory. For all is changed when Jesus comes to stay. Unclean, unclean, the leper cried in torment, the deaf and dumb in helplessness stood nearby, the fever raged, Disease had gripped its victim. Then Jesus came and cast out every fear. When Jesus comes, the tempter's powers are broken when Jesus comes the tears are wiped away he takes the gloom and fills the heart with glory for all is changed when Jesus comes to stay. Their hearts were sad as in the tomb they laid him, for death had come and taken him away. The night was dark and bitter tears were falling. Then Jesus came, and night was turned to day. When Jesus comes, the tempter's powers are broken. When Jesus comes, the tears are wiped away. He takes the gloom and fills the heart with glory. For all is changed when Jesus comes to stay. So men today have found the Savior able. They could not conquer passion, lust, and sin. Their broken hearts had left them sad and lonely. Then Jesus came and dwelt himself within. When Jesus comes, the tender's powers are all broken. When comes, the tears are all wiped away. He takes the gloom 
and fills the heart with glory. For all is changed when Jesus comes to stay. Songs of hope, words of hope, prayers of hope. I want to thank Pastor Bogus for bringing us the eulogy of hope. The resurrection is what keeps us together. It, it allows us to go through moments like this. What do you say, brothers and sisters? The hope of being together with Christ and being together with the loved ones. And so we're going to leave this place with hope. Amen? Amen. And we're going to walk in hope. We're going to live in hope. We're going to remember Martha in hope of that blessed resurrection. But until then, we'll keep on treading. We'll keep on going through until that blessed day. Let us pray. A loving and merciful God, once again, we are grateful for Lord, your presence in this place. Father, we thank you, Lord, for what we have witnessed today in the acknowledgments, Lord, in the prayers, in the presence of those who loved and knew her. And Father, we just ask your blessing to be upon us, Lord. Be upon the family. Give them comfort in those times when they stand in need of it, Lord. Give them, Lord, and remind them of the blessed hope that Tom talked about today, that it gets us all through. Because, Lord, truth be told, we all will come to this place if time lasts. But, Father, we get through it and we get by it as much as we hurt, as much as, Lord, we, we grieve, Lord. It's the blessed hope that keeps us alive. And so, Father, until we see you face to face, until we see Martha face to face, Lord, keep us in your care. Build us up until we see you again. Having said that, Lord, we pray all of these things in the blessed hope and the blessed name of our Lord, our Savior, and our soon-coming King, Christ the Righteous, we pray. Right, gentlemen, what we need to do is pause real quick. We're going to face the casket like this with both hands. We're going to extend our arms so we don't pull on each side. Take your time, watch your step, and we need to keep it elevated all the way across the step. Okay? Step up. Loving Father, once again, we're so grateful to share this time with the family. Father, our hearts go out to them, and Lord, we have witnessed your presence here. And so, Father, we pray that at this moment, that Lord, indeed, you would give us more comfort. Help us to understand and know that you embrace us, Lord. And that, Father, you look as much forward to the reuniting of all of our loved ones on that day, even more than we do. And so, Father, it's with that hope, it's with that understanding that we come to this place, asking again once for your comfort, your love, and mercy to cover us. And these things we ask in your Son's name, our comforter, our keeper. Amen. 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 I want to share just a couple words of scripture with you again. Words of Christ from the book of Revelation. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I live forevermore. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. And then Christ's words again to Mary and Martha. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. 
words from Revelation that we heard earlier today. And behold, I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and he shall be his people. God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. We look to that day when Jesus will return. When this resting place will no longer be a west resting place, but it will be a place of life and of activity. Mm -hmm. We have not long ago celebrated the 4th of July, and I often, in my head, think about being at a cemetery when Christ returns, and the celebration will be like a 4th of July celebration. All of that joy and hope and sparkle and glitter and, and, and bang is going to happen in this place where lives are raised up and renewed and restored. Christ says in the book of Revelation 22, the last chapter of the Bible, Behold, I come quickly. He says that three times. Behold, I come quickly. Behold, I come quickly. Behold, I come quickly. And then John responds, Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. That is our prayer today. Come quickly. Let's pray. Father God, in so much as in your infinite love and wisdom, you have permitted our sister Martha to fall asleep in Christ. We do tenderly commit her body to the ground in the sure and certain hope of a joyful resurrection morning when our Lord shall return in glory. Then this body of our humiliation shall be changed to be made like unto his glorious body, according to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things, even unto himself. Again, we echo John.